Hello and welcome. My name is Brian Kaplan. I'm editor of the Banker Magazine. We're at the Institute of International Finance's spring meeting. I'm here with Spencer Lake, who's the head of global capital financing for HSBC. Spencer, there was a panel discussion on the Remimbi this afternoon, talking about the internationalization. Where have we got to with that process? Thanks, Brian. As I said at the panel, I think the internationalization of the currency is one step of China's globalizing. And th that's an important differentiation because there are multiple steps along the way. Uh, I, I think there, you know, as a payments currency, as a trade currency, as a financing currency, a tremendous amount of progress has been made over the last handful of years. And now China, as a payments currency, is, is well within the top 10 from a SWIFT perspective, which is, you know, uh, it was the 13th 12 months ago, and before that it was outside the top 20, so you know, quite significant. Uh, as a trade currency, obviously, China has moved now to the number one spot globally, and uh, both inbound and outbound, uh, which is setting the economy up, generally speaking, to become what we think is going to be the world's largest economy within the next decade. Uh, and that has obvious implications in terms of the reserve currency status. Uh, we've seen over 25 central banks around the world now adopted um, as a uh, put swap lines in place in order to accommodate it. There's over 40 or 50 central banks globally who are using the currency not in a reserve basis, but but certainly from an investment perspective. Um, and we're seeing you know, a major shift from that perspective. Uh, as a capital markets tool, obviously the offshore market has been the most visible. And because we've seen international companies issuing in the renminbi. Yes, and you know, year to date, last year the total volume offshore dim sum, as we call it, was 370 million or billion RMB. This year we've exceeded that already by the end of May, and uh, that's really the tip of the iceberg. We're starting to see issuance now in other centres, in, in London, obviously, uh, in Taiwan, in Singapore, we'll see them in, in, in Sydney, we'll see them in Frankfurt. It, it's exciting. Okay, now one of the, th the things that was asked at the panel was obviously uh, the discussion always normally goes to, you know, China will have to open its current account at some stage, that will be the next stage up in the renminbi internationalization. And the, one or two of the panelists, you know, particularly from the, ch the Chinese banks, were very positive about that. Yes. Uh, is, is that your impression too? You know, our, our, our view as expressed in research is that it will become convertible uh, by 2017, so that's not that long away. Yeah. Um, I think a very, very important ingredient then is the implementation and, and the definition around the free trade zones that are being set up with the first one in Shanghai. You know, there's not a lot of uh, uh, you know, definition given on what's going to happen, but that is going to be the, the portal, as I call it. The, the mechanism by which the inbound outbound, whether it's foreign exchange, whether it's trade related, whether it's investment related, can go through. That can be that. That's the test. That's the pilot project to find out uh, whether the the country can accommodate uh, a more free flowing capital account mechanism. Okay. Now we're in London, and London is obviously pitching itself as uh, as one of the international centres for the for the Remimbi. I mean. How's it going? And what, what are the prospects? It's clearly not going to be as big as Hong Kong or Shanghai, that's for sure. Yeah, by definition. Yeah. Uh, it's not a big trade country, but it is obviously a, a leading, if not the leading financial center in the world. Uh, so that's important. I think uh, it's, it's there, you know, we, we set up, I, I've been part of the initial steering committee uh, going back to 2012 to put milestones in place for the city of London. Uh, to reach that, whether it's uh, putting swap lines in place, you know, setting up investment accounts, etc. I think all those milestones have been hit, so I wouldn't be surprised in the next fortnight mm -hmm. to see an announcement on who the clearing bank is going to be uh, to then get to the next level. Uh, so that that's being broadly signaled around. Okay, uh, all right, we'll wait level. for that. Okay. So that's exciting. All right, Spencer, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts. Thanks, thank Brian. you. Have a good conference. Thanks.